Welcome back. It's still plus politics. The Federal High Court Abuja has ordered Senator Alin Dume to be remanded in Kuja prison uh, following the refusal of Abdul Rashid Maina, former chairperson of the defunct pension reformed tax team, to appear for his trial. The judge Okonabang gave the order when Ndume failed to file a formal application to explain why he should not forfeit the bail bond of 500 million naira deposed on May 5 as part of the conditions for standing as surety for Mena. In response to this, the Arewa Youth Consultative Forum, AYCF, has called his imprisonment unfair, saying that the court allows Senator Abaribe to work freely despite his inability to produce the leader of IPOP, Namdekano, in court. To discuss the truth of this statement, we have uh, Bolanli Olubani, who is a legal practitioner. And interestingly, we also have another legal practitioner, Kolade Olutekumbi. Good evening, gentlemen. Uh, good evening. Yeah, it's going to be a bit of um, uh, uh, some kind of lecture for those of us you call <laughs> uh, unlearned, whichever way. Uh, let me start with um, Olutekumbi. How do you explain this two scenarios? Because people will be like, I think Abaribi was able to work his way out, and why do we have uh, uh, Meina remanded in Kuja prison? Yes, thank you, Kaidi, for having me. Uh, let us have the, the background as to what obligation is what he owes the court. When an accused person is arraigned in court and the offense is believable, he is entitled under the law to have his bail taken, and the person who is taking the bail is called the sorty. Now, when bail bonds are done, bail bonds are like uh, a bond that the sorty makes, assuring the that in the event that the accused is, un, is unable to continue with his trial or is unable to be present at trial, that the squatty will forfeit the bail bond if he's unable to produce it. So in this case, um, what has happened is that the squatty, who is, uh, who is uh, the horrible senator now, Secure the bail of Mena for 500 million naira. Under the Administration of Justice Criminal Act 2015, specifically Section 179, Subsection 4, the provision is to refer that when the penalty for a bail bond cannot be paid by the shorty or it cannot be recovered from the shorty, the shorty shall be liable to imprisonment of a time not exceeding six months. Hmm. That's the provision of our laws. Hmm. So for uh, Senator Dumet to have gone into taking the security bond of an accused person, he ought to have the portions of the provisions of this act. Hmm. There is no, the ignorance of the law is not an excuse. Hmm. So for me, um, what has played in that court may, may be different. I don't have the facts, and I don't want to do much gestures. But what has played in that court is to refer that the, the, the shorty is unable to secure the bonds. And the bond is I have to produce evidence of this 500 million to the court. And if he's unable to produce, if he's unable to pay the money to the court, and is going to forfeit the bail bonds. So this is just to enable the accused person to be present at all times to face his trial. This is what the short is all about. So for me, I think we should not try and politicize whether one person had his own free or one person did not have his own free. Once you are shorty in respect of an accused person, your responsibility flows in accordance with the law. That if at any point the accused person is unable to start trial, you are assuring the court that you will produce him. So your inability to produce him, you know, goes with uh, some criminal responsibility. 
Okay. So that was what has happened. Okay, good. And the law is no respecter of any person, whether you are a senator or whatever you are. Okay, the thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Lutekovi. You know, time is always running when we are on this show. And uh, unfortunately, you are not able to take the other part of the question. Maybe Bolali will help you. Um, what is the difference? You remember the story of uh, 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 Nam De Kanu and uh, Senator Abaribe? Olubani, help me out. Well, my own perspective is that the essence of bail is to ensure the attendance of the defendant or accused in court anytime it's required to face his trial. If uh, someone is given bail, there are two types of bail. One at the police station, which is administrative, where one enters into a bond to produce a person for further investigation. And there's also the bail of the court, where if somebody is charged for a criminal offense, somebody stands in stands as a uh, security for that person and may also enter into a bond that if the person does not attend court or jumps bail, he will be liable for the amount on the bond. So I believe this is what Senator Ndume has done. And uh, he was called to the court to show cause why the person he stood for is not in court. So that procedure is shorty to show cause. And if the person is not available, he will be remanded pending the time when he can fulfill the amount of bond he entered into. In the Abaribe case, the conditionalities given by the court are such that um, the person of Unam Dikanu uh, is to be produced when required by the court too. I am not sure whether there is a monetary value attached to the bond to which Senator Enaya Abari be entered into to secure the bill of Unam Dikanu. And if Unam Dikanu has jumped bail, Senator Abari Be may have applied to the court to be released from standing mm -hmm. as surety for Namdikanu. If the court has granted that order, and Senator Abaribe has given indication that the person he stood for uh, is not within his uh, capacity to produce, other issues may arise. So um, one is the issue of whether there was a monetary bond the second issue is whether Ain Ayabaribe has withdrawn as surety for Nam Dikano. If not, the Indume situation, where Indume is now remanded until he can produce the amount that he stood for, will also apply to Abaribe sooner than later. Okay. Um, thank you so much uh, for that bit of education. But for a layman and for many people who have been doing this, uh, that, that, that there seems to be some kind of caution as much as uh, we have seen a situation where the high and the mighty are being used as scapegoats for us to know that there is equality before the law. What does it take to be a surety? Why should you stand in for someone as a surety? How much information should you have about a person before you can stand in as a surety? This is more like a, a, a piece of advice now. Let me start with Oluta Kumbi. Well, uh, quickly, let me say this, that where the bond, where the surety has already been the bond first, okay? And before you can withdraw, you must withdraw at the point of producing the accused person in court. Hmm. The accused person must be present in court before you now tell the court that you are no longer standing at a surety. Because your obligation is that you must bring him to court on the day of trial. So you cannot withdraw if the accused person is not, in, is not present in court. So everybody, including anyone that cares to listen, should be, should be, should be more circumspect and very careful in securing the bail of persons that they know they have no control over, hmm. particularly when it comes to the individual appearing in court. 
Because what you are telling the court in essence is that you are prepared to replace him. You know, in the, in the state, when the state is prosecuting someone for an offense, and the, the offense is bailable, the accused person can't bail himself, except the, except the bail of self recognizance. But where the accused person, where there are conditions that are attached to it, then the accused person needs someone to bail him. So you bail someone that you know and you are sure has a character that you can vouch for. Not somebody that you know that the possibility of the commission of the crime is 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 uh, is is, uh, is 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 real. Okay. Because at the end of the day, once his once the bail is secure and his uh, his momentary freedom has been uh, guaranteed, they they, they 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 disappear. Okay. Good. Hello, Jacoby. I'm coming to that. Let me quickly talk to Bolanli again. I, I, I want you to respond to that because I think a lot of people want to learn more rather than just looking at the controversy around it. However, I still want you to put this in perspective. The name Mena is in the news again. You remember before it could even appear in court. You remember the circumstances around him being absconding, saying that the government knows his whereabouts. The man may not again. Is it a case of the judiciary trying to teach us a lesson that, excuse me, we don't care the backings you have, you've got to face justice? Yes, I, I, be, I believe so, because uh, ordinarily, one would have expected that the, the person of a senator of the Federal Republic of Nigeria to be more, uh, to be more careful as to the person he is to secure bail for. You see, what has happened is that I think they are, this thing has been unnecessarily politicized. It, you know, when somebody is standing prior in court and you are standing at the court for that person, you should not politicize it. You must look at the real issues okay. that are involved. Well, so this be... person has not demonstrated enough, uh, 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 enough honesty. Okay. As so it's being present to answer the the the. the well, look, be... Sorry, I, I think there's a mix up. There is there is we have Olu Tekubi and we have Olu Bani. Now the question was actually directed at uh, uh, directed to Mr. Olu Bani. So, but it's okay if you can still react to that question. The person of Mena in the news again, and also what are the lessons that we should learn? as individuals. This is for Bola and Bali now. Okay, well, the lessons that are to be learned are that uh, the rules of court and the orders of court ought to be complied with. If somebody is given certain bail conditions and uh, the person is given the benefit of the doubt and he's given bail conditions to enable him to appear in court whenever he's required to appear, uh, one should not perform the role of a shorty hmm. in a very uh, light-handed way. The obvious implications uh, for future of the bail bond and even incarceration, as distinguished Senator Ndume is experiencing now. And the essence of this is probably a determination by the judge presiding to send a clear signal to would-be shorties, a deterrence to others who will stand shorty, that the issue of shortyship for a defendant or an accused is not a matter to be toyed with. It's not a simple matter. Okay. It has very serious okay. responsibilities and implications. Okay, Mr. Lugbani, I'm so sorry I'm, I'm uh, trying to interject what you're saying. Uh, I just understand that uh, maybe in the next 30 seconds for both of you, another issue that looks a bit lighter and that affects virtually every one of us, the issue of guarantorship. This happens from time to time when people want to get a job. Any lesson from this story in terms of standing as guarantor for people? What does it take to stand as guarantor? If you can do that in the next 30 seconds, I'll be very grateful. Me Olu first. Olubani, please, first. <laughs> if you guarantee somebody <laughs> for a job, best thing secures the employment <laughs> and goes to chop like 300 million at the workplace, <laughs> the guarantor will be head like below. <laughs> there is no escape. And where is not to be head liable in. Uh, refunding the amount 
He must produce the person he guaranteed for the employment. Wow. That's the only other remedy. OK. Very short and simple. <laughs> Mr. Luther Kobe, can you add more to that? Well, let us not uh, honestly scare people from securing okay. deal or standing as garants for the people. <laughs> Just ensure that you do a proper profiling of that individual. And be sure that the individual are people that you really know. Because the whole essence is that you know them. So you must know the, uh, that individual properly. Properly. To be able to secure that individual whenever his attendance or presence is needed. Thank you so much, gentlemen. I'm sure you have so much to tell us. But as unfortunately, time is gone. Thank you once again, uh, Barrister Koladi Olutekumbi and Barrister Molanle Olubani. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. We'll do our best to make sure that uh, we distinguish the name so that there is no confusion. Thank you for your time. Thank you. And to our viewers, thank you for staying with us. We'll take a short break now. And when we return, I'll be giving you my take. Please don't go anywhere. Here's my take. Whether this is justice in force, it might be premature. Whether this is selective, that may also be an important discourse. Is it sectional? That is also an unfair analysis. One thing is indisputable. This is law at work. And what do they say? Justice is blind. And indeed, it does not care whether you're a senator or not, black or white, short or tall. The big lesson for many is that who do you stand for as surety or the popular ones as guarantors? Very, very popular one. It is advisable to check thoroughly before you append your signature for someone. And that is my take on Plus Politics. Plus Politics returns tomorrow, same time, same station. I remain yours truly, Coyote Ladende, saying bye for now. <laughs>